There are four levels of anesthesia. The first level is minimal sedation. Next, we have moderate, also known as conscious sedation. Third, we have deep sedation. And the fourth level is general anesthesia. Now, general anesthesia you've already heard about, so let's begin with minimal sedation. Minimal sedation is a drug-induced state where patient responds normally to commands, the most common of which is called local anesthesia. Local anesthesia is anesthesia used for a specific area while the patient remains fully alert. Now this is considered minimal sedation because, again, the patient's fully alert of what's going on and the drug is localized to that specific part of the body. Now, the drug is usually injected into the skin where most pain receptors are. This allows uh, the doctor to work without causing any pain to the patient. Most common procedures are skin biopsies or stitching. Now, in extreme rare cases, it's possible that the doctor does even more invasive procedures, assuming that the patient's unable to tolerate a uh, more general anesthetic. An important note to remember about local anesthesia is that the drug is injected near or at the site of procedure. Now, it's, compare this to general anesthesia where the drug travels throughout the body. Local anesthesia is isolated to that specific area, so less chances of side effects as the drug is not absorbed by so many tissues. Although side effects do occur, most commonly is an allergic reaction, but again, this is very easily treatable compared to a more generalized reaction. Now, injections is not the only way that local anesthesia can be administered. You can also find it in sprays and ointments form. Moderate sedation, also known as conscious sedation, is a depression of consciousness where the patient replies to purposeful verbal commands, either alone or with light tactile stimulation. Moderate sedation is used to make you sleepy. Now, this is given through an IV drug, and usually on board is a pen medication to help relieve any sort of discomfort. A bonus to this medication is actually amnesia to the procedure. Now, this doesn't mean that during the procedure you won't know who you are, what's going on, but you'll be able to reply to certain questions asked of you, whether do you feel pain, or is there something in your throat? This is most commonly used with regional anesthesia. So the amnesia is important because it blocks the traumatic memories of the surgery. Kind of like how I blocked traumatic memories of my ex-wife. Yeah, basically. Deep anesthesia is a drug-induced depression of consciousness where the patient is not easily arousable unless it's repeated in painful stimulation. Now, this too can be used in regional anesthesia, where the doctor um, doing the procedure requires the patient to be absolutely still, and the anesthesiologist does not need the patient to be completely knocked out. So it's sort of a midline between general anesthesia and conscious sedation. Regional anesthesia is when an anesthetic is injected near a nerve or a group of nerves in order to block everything innervated in that region. For example, if the patient was having a right knee surgery, the anesthesiologist would most likely do a right leg block by blocking the femoral nerve innervating that leg. However, if the patient was having bilateral ankle surgery, the anesthesiologist would probably choose to block near the spinal cord where a group of nerves exit and innervate the leg. The benefit of regional anesthesia is the fact that you can deliver a high level of anesthetic to a specific part of your body. Compared to general anesthesia where the medication travels throughout the body, regional is a little bit more specific and pr protects your heart and brain. This means 
uh, your reflexes stay intact and there's less uh, post-operative nausea and vomiting and other side effects. And an added benefit is that after a procedure, regional blocks seem to control post-operative pain a little bit better than the others. Now to locate C7, you want to have the patient's neck bent forward and then you'll notice that C7 will actually come out towards you. This is why the name is called vertebrae prominence because it is a prominent vertebra that is easily palpable as you run your hand over the patient's back.